What's up, it's Chris from Hairless from Steroids, and we're going to hit up a pretty common question with rather a surprising answer, and that question is, does creatine cause hair loss? And it's been a long kind of thought thing that among doctors that it does, because they kind of pair anything that's a supplement could be a fucking vitamin for any, for that matter, and they call it a steroid, okay? Doctors, and we're not talking about, um, you know, dietitians or doctors that also have like a, a master's in nutrition, although there are very few, or sports medicine doctors. We're talking about your, your general clueless, no offense, GPs that kind of, you know, they... They didn't grow up in the era of supplements, okay, and largely supplements are crap, but they also seem to think every one of them is dangerous and stuff like that, which is actually not the case. Most supplements just don't do anything. All right, so they seem to think creatine is a steroid, okay? We know better. No, it's not, okay? Because if it was a steroid, it could possibly cause hair loss. Now, the supplement companies, advertisers, and the mainstream thought among bodybuilders, however, is... Of course, creatine is not a steroid, it's a supplement, and therefore it doesn't cause hair loss. Okay, so both popular schools of thought are actually incorrect. And this is actually something I learned too that while I was kind of of the notion of, no, oh, it's a supplement, it's a non hormonal supplement, it won't cause any hair loss because it causes no rise in DHT whatsoever, that has actually been disproven. And that's interesting to me, it's news to me, news to me as of a couple years ago, okay, when the study came out. And that study is in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine, it's a Canadian journal actually, published September 2009, looking at it right here. Basically, they took 20 college rugby players, all right, in South Africa. So these were trained, you know, athletes, they're, they're not just, you know, newbies who have fresh receptors uh, whether they've taken creatine or not, I don't know, but they're trained athletes, okay? They're not someone that will explode from any little kind of nutritional or hormonal change to their body, okay? 20 of these athletes for a six-week period, and uh, they gave these guys creatine with a loading phase, a standard loading phase um, of 25 grams a day, okay? Another group got the placebo, which means, you know, a sugar pill with no creatine and hopefully not sugar because that's bad for you, but... Um, and the results were this. The group that was taking creatine during the loading phase, okay, saw a 56%, and that's significant, okay, 56% increase in DHT after seven days. And now, if you're familiar with creatine, you'll know that you have to do a loading phase after your first, you know, seven to ten days or so of, um, or excuse me, a maintenance phase, sorry about that, after your seven days of loading it. So you'll take a dose of like 25 to 30 grams a day for a week, get it saturated in the muscles, and then you just wanna maintain it after that, okay? So, in the 14 days there after, I don't know why their kind of cycle was three weeks, it was probably just for the purposes of this study, uh, creatine did, re or DHT remained elevated during that creatine phase by 36%, okay? so. 56% during the first seven days of loading, 25 grams of creatine a day. 36 grams during the maintenance phase, which was the second um, two weeks, week two and three, elevated by 36%, okay? So it does raise DHT levels. Anything that raises DHT levels can be, um, you know, a culprit of hair loss. It can be, it can be, it can accelerate it. So. While creatine is not a hormonal supplement, it's not, okay? It is not a derivative of testosterone in any way. Basically, it's one of those unique ones that can increase your DHT levels, okay? And another thing that was interesting to point out, and I'm making this point here, where, I mean, the sample size is small, 20 athletes, okay? But... The interesting thing here is these were trained athletes, okay? You take someone who's, you know, not been in the gym in several years or ever, you get them lifting weights, you get them training, their test levels will go up in seven days. I don't know about that. But these, you know, they were a good, um, you know, kind of, you know, the study is legit, okay? They were a good uh, sample, okay? The sample size is small, 20, but I do think 
this uh, the study definitely holds credence. And uh, the interesting thing is here is, um, and this is you know my speculation here, HGH might be safer on the hair than creatine. Okay, like I said, if you see my my video, does uh, HGH cause hair loss? The answer is perhaps, but it's likely to be shedding. Okay, because it doesn't actually increase the HT, or only very marginally. Certainly less than creatine, 56%, uh, only marginally. So any hair loss from HGH would probably be shedding. It's just a simple hormonal fluctuations and balance and should return to normal. Creatine, on the other hand, um, there is evidence that it does and it can cause hair loss. So if you were to use it and you're concerned about, um, you know, accelerating it, I Finasteride would be a good idea, and I do think, and obviously these college rugby players, um, probably none of them were on Finasteride, not, there's, probably wouldn't qualify for the study because that would obviously influence it quite a bit, but Finasteride does a really good job of lowering DHT that converts from testosterone, okay? So in theory, it would be effective against DHT created by creatine supp supplementation, okay? Not against things like Dianabol and Tren, okay? Because the, the pathway that testosterone converts to DHT um, is different in that case. In that case, it's just straight up DHT. In order for finasteride to work, you have to break that pathway from t testosterone turning into DHT, okay? And that is what um, finasteride does, and it would be successful um, in theory, okay, against creatine supplementation. In my opinion, though, and I'm very sensitive to male pattern baldness, creatine didn't really accelerate my hair loss. Possibly, though, now I go back thinking on it, but, you know, it wasn't significant. You know, it wasn't, like, steroids, okay? Even though a 56% increase, at least during the first seven days, is significant. So, I would proceed with caution with creatine, and, um, you know, this goes very much against what I've thought for years, okay? Like I said, I learned this a few years ago, but um, it does very much go against the fact that, oh, creatine's not a steroid, it's a supplement, it's a non-hormonal supplement, can't do anything, you know, it won't create any sort of hair loss or increase in DHT. That has been disproven, and I would proceed with caution.